When I was five, my mom had already divorced my father and she was diagnosed with schizophrenia and bipolar and put into a mental institution. And she called CPS, which is Child Protective Services in the States and asked them to take her kids away. How many foster homes were you in as a child? 22, 22. That's a high number, Stace. What was that it like? Is. Um, it is. It was difficult. The I was in two of them long-term where it was more than a year. The first one was five and a half. The second one was three. And then after that, in a six month period, I went through 20 different foster homes. Um, what did that do to you? Uh, it made me resent foster homes. <laughs> I didn't want to go back. I was tired of being told that I wasn't wanted and that I didn't mesh well and that, you know, whatever excuse they could come up with, that it wasn't working out. So I just ended up not wanting to be part of that environment and I wanted to, to try something else. That something else was New Horizons Christian Academy, a boarding school for troubled teens. It was there that Stacy began to heal the wounds from a hurting past and where she was introduced to the person of Jesus. Um, I knew who he was and I had accepted him as my savior in that, that he was, he died for my sins, but that was it. There was no relationship. I, I didn't want another relationship that could let me down. For Stacy, the pain of her past made it hard to trust, almost impossible to hope. I never really felt like I was ever gonna get adopted. Um, when I was 16, I, I told the court to take me off the adoption list because nobody wants older kids. It wasn't until I was like 17 that I accepted <laughs> that I was never gonna have a real family. Teetering on the brink of homelessness, Stacy would never guess that her dreams were about to be realized. I was um, 19 and I had graduated from high school and I went into uh, the military and the military gives you leave, you know, every so often. And I would have to go back to the boarding school because I had no place to go. And um, they didn't like that. They didn't like that I wasn't able to detach from that. They knew I needed to kind of sever the, the cord and, and to move forward, but I couldn't because I had no place to go. And so they kind of got together and they were like, look, someone needs to take this girl in. Like we can't keep letting her stay here. And that's when um, John and Rachel Stark offered their home to me. With four children of their own and an income already spread thin, the Stark family opened their home and their hearts. I did feel loved. Like, I did feel like they weren't doing it out of charity, that they actually did care about me. But there, there's still that feeling of, of, of being a burden. And maybe that if you're too much of a burden, that they'll say, okay, it's enough. We can't do it anymore. And so I was just... Even though God had presented it to me, I was still waiting for the left shoe to drop. Give me an example of one of those moments where you're like, this is a family, we have to stick it out and get through this. A situation had gone down where someone had told my dad something about me, um, about being out the bar and acting inappropriately. And I told my dad that I had been at that bar, but I was a designated driver and that, you know, that the circumstances had been different. And he called me a liar. And I was like, that's it. If you can't trust me and you think I'm a liar, I'm out of here. And I jumped in my car and I went to drive off and my mom came running out of the house and she put her hands on the car and she's like, you do not leave. When there's a crisis, you work it out with your family. You don't walk away from it. If you walk away, you're ruining it. You need to come back. And I did, I shut my car off and I went back in the house and we talked it out. And you know, dad heard my side of the story and he realized, you know, okay, the facts weren't straight. And you know, it's, it's not easy. What did you learn from that moment when your mom jumped on the hood and said, no, you can't go, you have to fix this right now? That they were serious about, about this relationship, that, that it wasn't just, you know, that they needed to provide something and that they did, that they were in it for the long haul, which was different for me because everybody else was not. As soon as the, it got tough, they got going. And so for me, it was more of like, okay, they're in it. So, and that was kind of when I stopped expecting for the bottom to drop out because I knew that no matter what I did, no matter what I said, they were always gonna love me. As Stacy's perception of what a family meant began to be repaired, so too did her image of God. That all changed because dad, my dad, my father showed me that 
yes, he can be firm with me and he can confront me and, and, you know, discipline me in a way that my age should be disciplined, but he still loves me and that God is the same way. He, he understands that we're sinners and that we're going to screw up, but in the end, he still loves us and he will always be there for us. Where would you be without your family now? I would, I would be alone and I would probably, I, and this is probably a stereotypical answer, but I would probably be pregnant with kids because a lot of, a lot of kids that grew up with my background um, f try to find love and acceptance from a baby. I would be probably not in university. I probably wouldn't be married to the man that God had set for me. I'd be married to a, a guy that, that I wanted, um, whether it be healthy or not. Stacy credits John and Rachel Stark for modeling the possibility of a healthy marriage. And on a sunny July afternoon with her adoptive family by her side, Stacy took another leap of faith at family and a walk down a wedding aisle. One of my favorite pictures is when um, I'm standing in the middle and they're both kissing me on the cheek. Uh, for years I thought I was going to have to do it by myself and that's the most terrifying experience is walking anywhere by yourself in front of people. It's what every bride dreams of and hopes for. What did it mean to you to have John walk you down the aisle as your father? There's no words, really. I. It meant that I finally had a family and that I was loved and that they were mine and no one could take them away from me. So, yeah, I said I wasn't going to cry. <laughs> Whew. So, yeah, and it... The kids were just as excited. They, you know, the little boys were strutting their stuff and their tuxes and the girls felt amazing that they were part of it. So I didn't feel like I took away from anybody. Um, I just added another member to their family. And Anthony's just another brother to them. So it's, it's awesome to, to know that. They have such big hearts. And uh, yeah, there needs to be more people like that. <laughs> For Listen Up TV, I'm Ricky Ratliff.